Hi, and welcome to my OCR AA level biology revision session with me, Christine. So today's lesson, I want to look at plant defenses. So let's just remind yourselves about pathogens. So a pathogen is an organism or virus which is going to cause a communicable disease. So there are specific examples that you need to know for your exam. So a bacterial pathogen would cause the ring rot disease in potatoes, tomatoes, aubergines, the viral pathogen, tobacco mosaic virus. Now this can be found in other examples as well, not just the tobacco plant, but it is the TMV is what it is called. You have your fungal pathogen which would be causing the black cicatoka for example in bananas and the protoctista which would cause the late blight in potassium potato and tomato plants. So it's important that you know these examples. If they're going to give a question, it could be a multiple choice question. But what they'll also potentially be looking at is, can you identify whether it's a protoctistin or whether it is a prokaryotic cell, whether it is a eukaryotic cell? So they may give some questions which look at module two knowledge as well. But these examples you do need to know. You then need to know about the fact that it can be transmitted and whether that is through the fact of infected leaves touching other uninfected leaves and therefore transmitting this communicable disease or is it that there are spores which are in the soil which are contaminating that soil. Now it's important to note that with some of these it can take, if there is an infection, it can take two to three years before you can grow a crop in the same soil because of this contamination. The other thing is about vectors and the fact that vectors can obviously disperse these pathogens. So vectors could be wind, it could be water, there could be an animal, it could even be humans that brush against and transfer from one part of a plant to another and therefore infecting a crop. So it's really important we understand that these pathogens that cause these communicable diseases can be transmitted. So how do plants defend themselves then? Because they can't get up and walk away. So they have specific defense mechanisms. So the physical ones are things like layers of dead cells around the stems. So if you look at the bark on trees, they can fall off. You can look at the waxy cuticle, which is a protective layer, and even the cellular cell wall. These all act as barriers to those pathogens to prevent them from entering into the transport system within the plant. Well, what happens if the pathogen does get in? Well, the plant can actually produce a polysaccharide, which is called callose. Now, if there is a pathogenic infection, if there's injury or there's changes in environmental temperatures, that could cause the plant to produce this callose. Now, the reason it produces the callose is because there are receptors which are going to detect signaling molecules. Now, these signaling molecules can either come from the pathogen itself or it could come from those damaged areas within the plant. Now, these signaling molecules, what they're going to do is activate a secondary messenger. That secondary messenger is going to switch on genes within the cell. And those genes within the cell are going to cause the cell to start to produce callose. Now, it's important we note that callose is a polysaccharide. And that polysaccharide is going to form glycosidic bonds. Now, when you get given a diagram, a lot of the time it's really important that you look for the little hints. So we can see here that they've given us a diagram and they've labelled carbon number one. So when we go through and look at this, we should therefore be able to label if that's number one, where number two is and where number three is. So we can quite clearly see there is a beta one to three glycosidic bond. Well, the polysaccharide callos also has a one to six glycosidic bond, and I've labeled that here in purple. So if they give you a diagram, a lot of the time they're giving you hints for you to be able to pull the information 
out. So do make sure you take the time to look at any diagrams that have been given to you in the stem of a question. Now, once this callus has actually been produced, what will happen is it will be used to block off, for example, the cell membrane, the plasma dismata, the corridors between the cells. It will be used to block off cell wall and it will be used to block off the sieve plates in the floor. Now what that's doing is that's ensuring that if a pathogen has got in, it's not going to be able to be transported elsewhere in the plant. So what they do is the plant actually cuts off that area. Because the plant has lots of meristem cells, it can just continue to grow. So it basically blocks off the infected area and leaves it to die. And what it then does is it then puts lignin, which is a thicker material, which is produced to thicken and strengthen that cell wall. Again, blocking the area off where the pathogen has actually infected the plant. So this is one way in which the plant is going to defend itself against the invasion of a pathogen. The other way is where it's producing chemicals. So these powerful chemical compounds that can either kill the invading pathogen or repel the vector of the disease. So it can produce antibacterial compounds, antibiotics, phenols, deferins, vacuoles with hydrolytic enzymes. These are all antibacterial compounds which can stop the pathogen if it is a bacterial pathogen. They can produce antifungal compounds. So chitinases are enzymes that are going to break down the cell wall of the fungus because chitin is a polysaccharide which is going to be used as the cell wall for the fungal cells. So if we have chitinases which are enzymes to destroy that, this is an antifungal compound. Also you will find these chemical responses in the fact that these phenols that are produced Things like tannins. So tannins have a really bitter taste and they're there to deter animals from eating the leaves. Well, they're actually toxic to insects. What they do is they bind to the enzymes in the insects and they inactivate them. So therefore, that is going to repel the vector that could be carrying that pathogenic molecule. We also have alkaloids. Alkaloids are another chemical compound that can be used. Again, bitter tasting nitrogenous compound, caffeine, nicotine, morphine, cocaine. These are actually toxic to insects and to fungi. They act as a drug affecting the metabolism of animals. So therefore it can also be used to deter herbivores from feeding on them. And we also have the insect repellent. So things like pine resin, citronella. Again, these are insect repellents. So if we are repelling the insect, we are repelling the vector that could be carrying this pathogen. So I hope you've liked this video. And if you have, then please do click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also check out my revision platform, www.aiqchat.com.